Aloha, Dr. Sword out here. Uh, welcome back. So, uh, I'm kind of meandering through the uh, topics of the, the first few weeks of the clinical theory course, talking about regulation, different levels of regulation, and, and just sharing uh, some thoughts, you know, top of mind thoughts with you as, as, as we go. Uh, and we've talked about blocked regulation being usually a toxin that's stored in the body that's blocking some physio physiological pathway. And, and, and really that's uh, the state that, that uh, unfortunately modern medicine uh, in many cases likes to put us in uh, where to, to stop a symptom uh, we, we use something that's a synthetic toxic material that, that the body is not genetically uh, de de designed and prepared and developed to, to handle and therefore it, it blocks a pathway and so you know, take out that symptom but we call it allopathic medicine because allopathic means a, a, a new disease. We're creating a new disease in which we don't have the old symptom but we've just buried the, all the causes of the old problem and added a new cause, a new issue, a new toxin, a new problem, a new blockage in our metabolism. Maybe we're already blocked in one place and, and the symptoms were an expression of trying to unblock that and trying to support the issue, the areas that are blocked and, and just, you know, trying to adapt to that stress pattern. Now we've created another layer on the agate, another deposition on top of that. So it, let's say we get the ball rolling, we start healing, you know, natural medicine, natural healers, you know, will be a, a good portion of the people in this course, people like naturopaths and acupuncturists, homeopaths and, and, and healers and health coaches, health educators. Uh, you know, uh, that's what you do. You help people through that process. And, 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 you know, one of the risks, one of the dangers in our culture is, is that, that, you know, tantalizing desire to suppress a symptom when it comes up. You know, I mentioned that aspirin causes future headaches because it, <laughs> it stops the body from completing the healing process for the cause of that present headache. And then the aspirin itself stores in the tissue. It over-alkalizes the tissue, turns the sol, the solution that's the body's solution, the way of solving the problem is dissolving, literally solving the problem, dissolving the, the tissue itself. The proteins turn into a sol and then in an acid state. And then the acids, the waste, the toxins are removed by the flow of extracellular fluid that's actually uh, pumped by light energy, largely through the eyes. Uh, I, I mentioned already that uh, the entire blood volume of the body is irradiated through the eyes in four, every 40 minutes. So getting natural light you know, is one of the traditional natural healers. Uh, people are getting a lot less of it these days, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, particular frequencies off of, of, of uh, you know, mobile device screens. Uh, but uh, in any case, you know, we need to uh, educate people and, and, and also have a way to uh, evaluate where they are at and you know, where we're headed uh, so that when we have a symptom, let's say we've gotten out of the negative regulation of a healing crisis where the things that are healing us make us feel worse initially. And often it's just for a few days, but it can go for a month sometimes when I've experienced that myself. A, a month of sinus drainage of buckets of stuff coming out like, oh my goodness, you know, you could certainly take an antihistamine for that, couldn't you? Yeah. Well, antihistamines just increase cancer in the sinuses and the brain because they're keeping the toxins in. We want to bring the toxins out. Mucus is a protein carrier for detoxification. Uh, it protects the body. Uh, so the mucusless diet is not, you know, you, at one point many people thought, oh, mucusless diet, that makes us feel better. Well, it's just suppressing through deficiency, not enough ability to make the proteins to detoxify. So, you know, we're kind of mummified when we do suppressive therapies. We're just blocked, we're stuck where we're at, not able to progress physically, mentally, spiritually, which is the point of being here, isn't it? Uh, so, so we get through the negative regulation by supporting the body, by resting, by fluids, by observing the particulars of the symptoms, you know, if our body is going through negative regulation, you know, we don't like the feeling of of urinating frequently, or maybe there's a, some irritation, some burning sensation, and the, the usual, you know, 
presumption is, well, there's infection, so we'll use an antibiotic, which like aspirin over alkalizes, turns the soil into a gel, again, uh, you know, too rapidly for the body to complete the healing process. Same with, with, with prescription steroids. Uh, so uh, if we can get through the healing crisis with supportive palliative measures, uh, rest and fluids and, you know, and positive, you know, prayer, uh, for ourselves and others. Uh, then we get into mixed regulation where there's some ups and downs, health returns in cycles. So the body cleanses, and we'll talk later on in the course about the phases of healing, the biophysics of the terrain, how the body goes through, you know, at a mod medium level of health, you know, relatively healthy level, phase three, phase four, as we move up the scale uh, toward phase five, the maximum, uh, when we're dealing with balance and life issues. But three and four, we're often cycling through those for a period of time of, of cleansing, phase four, cleaning out the connective tissue, which is an acidic state, and, and, and then uh, regenerating the tissue. Because when we clean and make space, oh, we can actually make one cell into two. We can regenerate that tissue. The liver, if the liver is, is by surgical means or, or uh, any whatever means, if it's down to even 5% or less of the cells, of the hepatocytes, you know, the parenchymal tissue there, um, I'm using some medical terms for those who have that training, but you don't have to uh, know those words to, to take this course. And it's really for, for, uh, for us as human beings who are looking to progress in our health, why? Because we want to progress as beings, as spirits. That's the point of having a body, is not to be a philosoph philosophical zombie, as you know, the conventional view is. You know, how can a how can a scientist with all that knowledge come to the conclusion that he is a zombie, that that thought is an illusion, that it's only an epiphenomenon? You know, have have a contemplation for them that this entire world, you know, the, the Eastern view that it's all Maya, well, it, it, it's a similar view that the world is an epiphenomena of God's brain. Now, if you look at the structure of the cosmos, the shape of the dark matter is exactly the same as the shape of the neurons in our own brain. As above, so below. Fractal, holographic, living universe. This is the conclusion that I come to in developing this model affirms and confirms you know, these, these thoughts which are empowering to us, give us actual you know, power as living beings. We're sentient, we can think, we can use our thoughts for healing. We know the power of every medicine is 50% our own thoughts, our own orientation and, and, and contextualizing the meaning that we give it, the expectation, the vision that we have for what that medicine is doing. So to, to fully heal, to heal maximally, optimally, we need to encompass that, incorporate that in our, our process, in our awareness, in our map. And we certainly will. The, the, the last you know, two-fifths, last 40% of the course is on the consciousness itself. And all of it interconnects, as, as you're seeing. It's, it's not that you know, we're dissecting the physical body and looking at here's the liver and here's the different kinds of cells, you know, the, on the, 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 the uh, bile ducts and the, you know, uh, the blood vessels that run through that carry the, the blood from the, the portal blood supply from the entire gut. Well, you know, we're going to talk about, I'll introduce you to these, you know, Western medical concepts and, and some concepts from Eastern medicine, Ayurveda, a little bit from Ayurveda with the chakras, because it all integrates and it's where the model came from, is contemplating and trying to synthesize the big picture, answer the big questions. Well, what, you know, what, what were the people in India looking at when they saw the chakras? They're seeing light, seeing color. Well, what were the people in China l looking at observing when they mapped out the meridians, which are, are confirmed, the direction, the locations of the points, all of it, confirmed by, by modern Western scientific studies, even though it's not acknowledged, but they're there, we'll talk about that. But uh, they're looking at the electrical 
So the light and the electrons are two different views. It's like the story about an elephant in a room and, you know, the different sciences and different cultures are like, you know, the different sciences looking in through a keyhole from a particular doorway at the elephant. And, you know, one is just seeing a rope and another is seeing a tree trunk and another is seeing a, a, a wall of a barn, you know, and another is seeing, uh, seeing a, you know, a, a, this uh, tusk, you know, this ivory horn-shaped object. So, so they all can't agree on, on the nature of the elephant, but yet there's one elephant in truth. So we're seeking the truth, we're looking to put the big picture together as a starting point. Because if we know we're dealing with an elephant, we have some options, you know? You can interact, you can communicate with the elephant better if you understand, oh, hey, maybe that's a tail, maybe that's a foot, maybe that's a trunk, and that's a tusk, and this is his, you know, his side. Uh, so, so uh, you know, grounding back down as we uh, wrap up. This one's getting a little long, but uh, having fun with you. So I hope you are too. Uh, you know, the the regulation. I start with regulation because it's a it's a good place to start. Honestly, it's just a, a if the body is stuck, how are you going to get your mind to work if your body's stuck? You know, the, the, the parasites that are, you know, overtaking you in the gut are, have their own consciousness and they're going to be making you think you want to eat this particular food that feeds them, that, you know, when they start dying off, they release endotoxins and you feel worse and now you feel better when you eat the, whatever it is, you know, the, the wheat, the dairy, the sugar, the chocolate, the, you know, the, the, the food allergen, the food uh, sensitivity, uh, food. So, uh getting through the, the mixed regulation phase, you know, we, we, need, we need a roadmap because you can take a suppressive medicine and take away a symptom. You can take a supportive stimulatory medicine that takes away the symptom, but you're going opposite directions. You need to know which way you're going, not just that worked. You know, just as with, with blocked regulation, you know, it's like, uh, nothing works. I've, I tried that. Homeopathy didn't work. Didn't work. Acupuncture didn't work. Well, you're blocked. It's not that it didn't work, so you're not working. Your body's not working. Something fundamental is blocked there. Uh, so uh, that's, that's a good chunk. Uh, digest that a little bit, and we'll see you next time. Aloha. Aloha.